Finish your cigarette, dude. We got DIY going. What are you doing with the bottle, dude? Why'd you do that? Like Why'd you put it? Do that, dude. I'm not putting cigarette butts in my face. Okay, front here. All right. Well, I want you to stand right here, bud. Over here. Look. See the camera right there? Look. Got it. Okay. You're kind of in the background. I'm in the foreground. Are you ready? Are you nervous? Nope. I'm ready. Okay, what's going on out there? This is Pete over DIY Auto School. We got Hood Eye with us straight out of where are you from? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Got a lot of the people out there that love the guy. He's a great thing guy. And once you see and know who he's all about, you're going to say the same thing. But what we're doing tonight is we, my friend Pete and Hood Eye, are going to show you how to spray candy apple paint and also do patterns using your tape and different colors of candy apple paint laying there on top of kind of like they do on these kind of low rider cars. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen this shit before? Oh, yeah. What are we talking about then? Just patterns, laying patterns out. Goes okay, like what kind of patterns? Are like we talking straight pattern. lines, circles, squares? Because I definitely, if I'm cutting you a square, don't cut me up and round, dude. <laughs> no, I don't know. We don't want to fucking round. Fucking what the hell, hood I talk? I don't know what your eye on the pie in the sky is, so I just got to figure out what kind of pattern you're okay. going down. But do you understand what I'm talking about? You're taking the concept of using candy apple paint with a heavy metallic silver as our base. All right, we're going to use the heavy metallic silver. I'm going to show you that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our candy apple colors. As we're layering them, we're going to airbrush this, do that, and we're going to make a nice little pattern out of it, kind of like the lowrider situation. All right? Now, can you go ahead and tell everybody what we already did here, bud? We ground off the edges. Hold that right there. Don't be shy of it. Got, the, go. sharp, got the sharp edges Watch out. Of there it. you go. And then okay. we, uh, then we de it with some 80 grit just to get some roughness on it and threw some primer on it. Okay, what the... There, there's my phone, dude. Mother. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So here we are over at the paint table now to start our little venture off on candy apple painting You got to have a base coat that's really going to jazz it up and be the center of attraction once you put the candy apple on Did you know that? To a degree, yes, yes or no, dude. I mean, okay. Halfway. All right, so what we got here. This is called coarse aluminum. This is a PPG brand paint Okay, now house of color and other people sell this item but this is some good stuff to use. You can go to the paint store and say, hey, uh, give me some raw, coarse aluminum uh, so I can use it for a base coat, blah, blah, blah. Get it nice and cheap instead of paying those house of color prices. So this is already pre-mixed. I'm going to show you what it looks like as we open the can up. This is an item that says, hey, guess what? My, pen, my friend Pete keeps it in stock for all the custom paint jobs going on over here. Now, take a look at that hood eye. See how sparkly that is? Yeah. Okay, that's a big difference if I, we can get a... Okay, that's your coarse aluminum. So when I say coarse aluminum, it has to be equivalent to a very, very sparkly paint. They also make another one, and it's called sparkle aluminum. And it's even more coarse. Because what's going to bring this fucking, let's say, candy apple pop it out is going to be this shit right here. Now, another thing is you can get gold, okay? Sparkle aluminum gold, where they put a gold tin in it and it turns to gold. Are you listening? Yes, is there anything you need to throw in? Hood eye guy, hood eye. So what Wing happens, it, whatever you got What do. happens if you would have used a gold base on this color that you're using? What okay, if you use a gold base, out? what's going to happen? It's going to have a different type of tint. So we're going to paint this blue. So this is going to be like a, a, a baby blue, I would say. If you use a gold, then it will turn it into a greenish blue. Do you see what I'm saying? So using different colors of bases uh, for your candy apple gives you a different tone of appearance. Does that make sense? Yes. So by using the silver with the blue that we're going to use, it's going to look like a super bright baby blue. All right, kind of like this right here, brighter than that though. And if we would have used gold, it would have been like, let's say, 
uh, using the gold base, you would take these two colors and mix them together, and then it would be an invariant. So using a base coat is very important when doing this. You've got to know what base coat to use. So what you want to do is make sure that your silver paint is mixed up thoroughly. Once it's mixed up, we're going to go ahead and get our spray gun just like this. And one important thing about doing this, and I like to cover all angles because, you know, the little stuff counts just like the big stuff. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there that say they show you how to do shit, but they don't go through the whole thing. Is you always want to use a fucking strainer with everything you do when it comes to painting, especially if you're concerned about doing it right where you don't have to go back over it. Does that make sense, Hood Eye? You're, not even, you're looking at me, not the camera. What the fuck? Yeah, it makes What's sense. What's your opinion on using this item right here? You have to use it because if you don't use it, my experience is I got a lot of dust in my paint. I Why are you talking of, to me, dude? I got a lot of uh, foreign objects in my paint, so I noticed that I had to use that every time I poured my spray. And let's just look at an example here. This is our sealer that we use. Look inside there. Yeah. Do you see all that? Lots of stuff. All right, this is uh, the sealer that we sprayed out. And you can see how lumpy and glumpy it is. It's very important you always use a, especially with the heavy metallic because the metallic doesn't really break up 100%. There's still lumps in it. So we're going to go ahead and pour just enough in here to use. And whatever we don't use, we'll go ahead and pour it back into the uh, can for later use. Because once you buy some base coat, once it's mixed, base coat is in relative to lacquer paint. All right, let me ask you a question, Hodai. We got the paint ready to paint. Now, what is our quest when we paint that panel? What's going on with this, dude? You want to get the panel completely covered 100%, and you want to make sure there's no, the metal flake hasn't striped out or it's not stuck together. Okay, we well, don't no, have no blotches, nope. so make sure that you got a nice clean pattern on it and make sure that it's covered very well. So that might take two coats, three coats maximum, but what he's saying is it's got to be covered good because once you put that uh, uh, candy apple on it, it's going to show every what? Every, every... Uh, every defect, every tiger stripe, every anything There you go, that you tiger can see. stripe. That's what I'm getting here. Let's get over to our panel. Let's get some fucking silver paint on this bitch so we can go home. Let's do it. All right. Now, I want to explain something to you. I want to explain safety. Safety is very important in doing this. We are painting a very small panel here. We got wind blowing that way, wind blowing that way. We're not going to get anything in our lungs or on our skin. When you are doing this type of work, I am going to do this without any type of respirator or mask. But it's very important when you do this at home to always wear your safety equipment. The reason I am not going to wear one now is because I need to talk to you, the viewer, and explain what we're doing while we're doing it. Okay, we got the fan going. Let's get this thing painted silver so we can move down the line. While that's drying, we're going to go look at our candy apple paint and see what it's made of. Okay, Hood, I just asked a real important question. What that? What were you asking, dude? I asked if there's how long is the time that we should wait until we put the next coat on. That's a very good question. I was just going to answer that. Hood, I went ahead and asked it first, though. And what the answer is to that question, it depends on the reducer that you're using. There's three different styles of reducer that you add into your paint. There's a, a slow, medium, and fast. Of course, living in Colorado where you live, most of the time you would only use a medium and a fast reducer because the weather's cold. Being down here in Texas, a uh, hundred fucking degrees out, you would normally use a medium or a what? Slow. Oh. Keep up here, bud. Oh, well, I had another question. So what about the humidity? Like where I come from, it's a dry place. Over okay. here in Texas, it's 150 Right, but the heat is so fucking hot, dude, that the humidity is going to bother. Now, if you have that type of a problem, what you'll have to use is an additive that is going to take the humidity out where it actually clouds up the paint. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That usually happens only when it's like very, very wet outside and rainy. Okay. All right. So what you want to do is use the compatible reducer to the uh, temperature that you're spraying at. Um, this is about medium temperature with the uh, breeze blowing through here uh, and being inside the building. We're about 80, 80 degrees, 75, 80 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and use medium reducer, but that's a good point that Hood Eye made. And thank you, Hood Eye. Can I get the paint? Yes. Did I even answer your question? Yes. No. All right, you want to wait about approximately, what? No, you didn't answer my question. Okay. You're good. Go ahead. You want to wait approximately five to ten minutes between each coat. Or, if you look at our panel here, hold that. Okay, you can see that it's already dry. When you see that it's dry, you can go ahead and put another coat on it. Look at the sparkle in that, dude.
did is I took this product right here. Uh, it's called a DBC 500. This is a color blender and inner coat clear. Now what this does, this seals the paint so we can do this to it. We can tape it off and we don't have to worry about it. But another thing I did, we don't advertise it, dude. Okay, hide the fucking names. I don't have time to tape shit off. We're in a hurry here. I also used this product right here, which is an accelerator for this product right here. So these two products together are going to make that accelerate and dry super fast so we can go ahead and start taping this thing off. Now, as I put the layers of paint onto this panel, every time that you mix some new paint up, what? You have to add a splash of this to every candy. That's right. Every All new right. Paint. Every new color of the candy apple we use. Candy apple paint is made out of this stuff right here. This color blender and dye. That's all that is, is the candy apple. But to make that dry very fast, so we can go ahead and lay our patterns down and put tape on top of tape. If we go that far, this product here has to be used. Right there, right there. So what we're going to do with our panel, forget what shape it's in and all that, we're going to go ahead and cut that baby in half. So what we're going to use here, we got some fine line, son of a bitch, there I go again. All right. We got fine line tape. Now we got different sizes and kinds here. And this is what creates a, a design for you. And I'm going to show you why. If we look at this tape right here, look what we got. All right. All right. This is like different layers of tape. Look what we got here, dude. All right. So if I only want to use this one, look. Or let's say I want to put two down and, and take the middle one out, then I can have those two. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. So this is kind of a creative, create your own style design fucking situation. So we're going to start out by using this tape right here. And I don't want to, let's see, is there a, is that one or two there? Okay, that's two. So we got three different, four different sizes here is what we have. So let's say that we want to put a border around our, design. Do you understand who I? Yeah. But we want to get creative with it. So I'm going to go like this right here. Watch. All right. I'm going to break that off there. And then I'm going to come back and use my X-Acto knife to cut the tape before I paint it and get my action going. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that right there. And then I'll take my tape one more time. And then I'm going to put a border on it like this. All right, and we're going to stop there because this panel that we're making right now, we don't give a fuck. We're just trying to show you how to use your tape to make designs as you're making candy apple paint. So since this one's on top, I'm going to go ahead and separate these two right here. Where the fuck is, there it is. And I'm going to leave this uh, middle one. I'm going to take the middle one out just like that. Do you see what I just did there? And then what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead, if you can help me out here, I get that middle one out of there. There you go. Just the middle one. And as he's doing that, I want to go ahead and explain to you. Now, you don't have to go straight lines. You can go in curved lines, whatever you're doing. What we're doing here is we are making a frame. We're going to try to frame out our design. And uh, what is the fucking problem here? Could I, what's I going on, dude? I have a hell of a problem with that. Yeah, you are having a hell of a problem, dude. I, can I needed the exacto knife. That's what it was. Okay, why do you need that, dude? Look, there we go, bud. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. There it is. Get her out and go down the road. And what the fuck happened with that? I'm not quite sure. Okay, there. Something okay. like that. This tape that we're using right here, it's sliced in different thicknesses so you've got to be careful with what you're doing. Once we stop right there what we'll do is we will take our X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut this one right here. Watch what I do. So I cut that right there and then I'll peel that off and I'm also going to cut this one right here. Okay and then when I peel that off like this 
All right, now we got a spot right here because we want this to be a continuous line. Do you see what I'm saying? So we're going to cut this one off here. Do you see what I just did there? Yep. Okay, and then we'll cut the inside of this one off. Make sure it sticks down good. And be very careful when you're lifting this up using your razor blade, you want to be careful not to cause a situation. So now we got this continuous line that runs like this and then this one comes around here, which gives us a bit of a design situation. Do you see what I'm saying there? Yep. All right. So we're just going to go with that right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take some blue fine line. And the reason I'm going to cut this in half because I'm going to put flames on one side. So we're going to find the center of our pattern here and then we'll go like that. And then once again we want to take this knife here because we don't want this overlapping. So instead of cutting it on the edge there, we're going to come right in the middle and we're only going to put enough weight on the blade to cut the top tape. We don't want to go through the other piece. Does that make sense for that? Yeah. All right. Now that we cut it in half, on this side here we're going to go ahead and do some fancy type uh, design using some other materials later. But I want to go ahead and put just a little mild flame job on this side because I want to show you how to get depth when you use your candy apple paints. And all we're going to do when we paint this, we're not going to paint the whole thing with candy apple. All we're going to do is use our touch up gun and all we're going to do is highlight all these lines up. But from using the overspray of the touch up gun going into the silver paint, it's going to give it depth, it's going to give it contrast. But on the other hand, it's going to give it outlines of everything. And it's really going to look badass. Are you following me, hood eye guy, fuck off hood eye from Colorado that can't stand the Texas heat? Yes, I am. Let's get a door open back here. You're sweating like a fucking pig. <laughs> and okay. we need to get some air here, bud. Mine's here. All right. So what we're going to do now is I am going to take my fine line. Now, I want to tell you about fine line tape. It all comes in all sizes, but the most common size is eighth inch and quarter inch when it comes to the blue. That's the most common use tape is the blue style. We're going to go ahead and make some planes with our eighth inch tape here. And I'm going to show you all how to do that. It's very simple, very easy. Uh, it does take a little practice, but we aren't worried about style because all this is about is using our candy apple paint to make nice fucking designs and get down the road. Okay, Hood Eye, let me ask you a question. Have you ever put flames on it? If you haven't, we don't care. Everybody's a newbie somewhere, somehow. No, I haven't. All right, to do a flame job, what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape. You see the tape I'm using? Yep. We're going to go ahead and free flow it, okay? So we're going to do the old school hot rod flames. We're going to start out with one side. Okay. One long fucking strip. Okay, we're going to start right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come like this. Look how I'm doing this. Okay? Do you see that? Yep. That's the start of our flame job. All right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to, let's see. I'll have to come over here. Can you trade places with me? I'm left-handed, dude. So then we'll have it like this right there. And then what I'm going to do, now I'm going to start making my fucking flames as we're going. And this is going to be a nice, clean, sweet, uh, hot, uh, uh, fucking hot rod flame. And another thing about this, you've got to make sure that your tape is nice and tight and nice and clean. So we're going to come around like this. Give it a little bit of a sweep. And then we're going to come back up. Do you see how I'm doing that? Yep. Okay. And I'm trying to do this the easiest possible way. Okay, we're going to make ours a little longer. Do you see that right there? Got it. Okay. These aren't going to be the best flames in the world. We don't give a fuck about that. This is just a, a fucking situation that says, hey, look what I can do. It's fucking hot out here. Uh, we're tired. And we want to go home. All right, and what we'll do now, we'll just go ahead and take this flame here and uh, kind of go like this. And we're going to end it off right here like that. Okay? And once again, I'm going to say it again, these are just cheesy ass little flames. We don't give a fuck what they look like. We are just trying to make a design so we can show you, the viewer, how to fucking do this. Does that make sense? Makes sense. I got the double shotgun here that says, if nobody likes my flames, go fuck yourself. You're watching the wrong fucking channel, dude.
That's right. Do you want to go ahead and kind of get in there with me and tell them that? Yeah. Yeah, you want to go ahead? There you go. If you don't okay. like it's my friend M. Pete's flames, there you, you go. can go fuck yourself. Okay, because like I said, these are toy flames. These are clown We're flames. Just teaching. These are flames that says, hey, I'm on the clown clock here. Look what I'm doing here, bud. Where's my fucking exacto knife? Okay. I want you, while I'm opening that door, take that exacto knife. Now, hold on. Because we're not going to, uh, we want this flame here to go through there. That's now, right. what would you cut to do that? You're going to have to cut this line and this That's line. That's the only out. one. That's it. That's it, dude. Oh, yeah, this one here. You got to cut this line off and this line. But to do that, we're not going to cut in the center right there. You're going to cut right on that tape line edge on each of them on the inside. Got it. And then we're going to peel those off without peeling the paint off. That's very important, dude. Okay. When you're done with that, we want to go ahead and find where that point comes to a point. And just go ahead and kind of like right here. And then what you would do is you'd slice that off and then take this extra off. Come way up here like this, slice that one off, and then possibly right there and slice that off. Okay? okay. Got it. So it's very, very important to remember to not use a lot of weight on your knife when you're doing this because you don't want to cut into the silver paint. Once we start putting our candy apple on this, the layers are going to start growing and growing and growing and the paint's going to get softer and softer. And that's why you want to use this product right here when you are using your candy apple with each color that you put on it'll dry nice and hard and you won't have any problems with uh, paint layers bothering you being soft and fucking with you. Why is your fucking fingernail, hold on, hold on, why is that fingernail so long? Is that something, that's, Is what is that dude, is that, that like a rock and roll thing? That's my pick. Okay. That's a self built Well get picking and get that fucking tape off dude. Okay, go open that door so I'll quit all sweating right, all over. Alright, don't sweat on it dude, yeah, don't sweat right. on it. That's right. Don't sweat it bud. Okay, so now we got our flame design there. It really doesn't look that bad. It's not really that fucking nice, but it's not really that bad. It looks pretty good. And we also got a nice line here that we're going to use. And I'm going to show you this is really going to turn out nice. And, and this is something that you can do at home uh, without all them big fucking guys sticking it up in your ass and giving you the fucking round while you're trying to make a square. Okay, so now that I noticed here, if you look right here, you can see this tape's hanging over. So we got to cut that blue tape off because we want to have a nice fucking design going here and we don't want anything hanging over all right so what we're going to do here we're going to give it some kind of vato design and make it look really you know uh let's say i don't know fucking just something and this is where your imagination comes in and it's nice to say hey uh, I want to fucking do a design and I want it to look nice. So let's go ahead and do this right here. See how I just did that hood eye? Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to come down. Once again, this is just real fast and quick, so we're not going to like, you know, get fucking fancy about it. So I'm going to try to manipulate this using this quarter inch tape and it's kind of hard, but uh, we'll see what we can do. And I'm just doing this real fast. I'm not fucking. This isn't a show car. This isn't nothing. This is just an item that says, hey, I'm doing this. All right, so we got this design over here. We're starting on it. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tape here and watch what I do here, dude. I'm going to start right there because I don't want it to be inside where the lines are. I want to keep everything on top of the tape. I'm going to come like this and then go back like this. Watch. You see how I just did that? Yeah. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut my tape right there, all right, because we don't want anything inside here, dude. So then I'm going to take my tape again, watch, lay it on top. See how I did that? Okay. And then I'm going to go like this, dude. All right. So now we got that design inside that design. And then we're going to come back over here. And I'm not going to be able to copy it perfect because, you know, once again, this is just a fast fucking deal. But we're going to kind of go like this. And then we're going to go like that. All right. And this is something that you can randomly put in your paint job. And it really sticks it out in the crowd and says, wow, that's pretty badass shit. All right. So we'll start with this one. Now watch what I do here, dude. I'm going to come way out here like this and then come back in. 
See how I did that? All right. And this is how you make patterns for low riders and uh, hot rods of the 50s, we might say, era. And you just, what you're doing is just throwing this shit out into the fucking world and saying, hey man, I, I got a design that's fucking pretty badass here. And then we go ahead and follow that. Do you see what I'm doing there, bud? Huh? Yep. Okay, so what are we doing here, Hood Eye? What actually are we doing? Now watch what I do here, watch this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make this one a squiggly one, see? Do you see there? Yeah. That doesn't look good, Hood Eye. No. That looks like fucking shit. You have to Okay, what the fuck, dude? Around. All right, if we did that, it would look like clown clock time over here. It's so I gotta get the clown clock out. We're already on it. All right. But the situation is, is that you can go with all kinds of angles and designs with it. And, and that's really what we're talking about here as far as pattern painting with candy apple paint. You can see what I got here. You can see where I'm starting out. That took approximately what? About 20 minutes. About not even 20 minutes. 15. What are we on here, dude? We're on. Okay, that took about 15 minutes, bud. Let me go ahead and finish this out because I want to put one more of these right here, dude. No, you know what? I'm going to go like this with it. I'm going to go from this angle here. Do you see that? See what I just did there, Hood Eye? Got it. And then what I want you to do, Hood Eye, I want you to go ahead and grab this tape. I want you to take this tape, and I want you to go ahead and, you know, kind of use your imagination and kind of finish this little design out. And let's see if we can do that without getting on the clown clock. And if you notice what I'm doing before I cut the tape, and I want to show everybody this, before I pull that tape off, I'm actually cutting it where I want it. And then that way I can pull it off and bam. You see what I'm saying? So as Hood Eye's doing that, you can see that it doesn't take a, a professional to do this. Uh, an average Joe that has any kind of imagination in his head can actually make a pattern using the fine line tape and taking it to the extreme of what he likes. I'm just throwing out designs there and I'm just, you know, taping anything randomly that might look right and go together. Let's see what Hood Eye comes up with and see where he goes with it. Now, since this is kind of a design right here that goes from one end to the other, do you think it would be better to go ahead and cut this right here? Watch what I'm doing. Cut this off right here so it would look like it's going under that. Yeah. Why don't we do that? See how you made the flame go on top? Yeah. Well, let's, let's cut these two sections out here, and then this will look like it's actually on there afterwards, and it's on top of it, and it'll give it more depth. Okay, now that actually looks even cleaner. Look what we got there, dude. So it looks like this one is going underneath and this one's on top. Do you see what I'm saying? Could I? Got it. You see what I mean? Yeah. So to finish this baby out, what do you think we ought to do? I think with all the stripe action we got going on here and the patterns that we got going, let's just move ahead and get this bitch done. That's right. The next thing we're going to do is I am going to take two inch tape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my flames. All right, you see what I'm doing here? I'm going to cover my flames off, just like this. And if you're doing a big flame job, if you got a lot of flames to do, what you'll want to do is you'll want to use an item called frisket paper. But since this is just a little test panel, we're going to go with this angle and be done with it. And always make sure that your tape is overlapping very carefully. What we'll do is we will take our X-Acto knife. Are you watching me? Yep. And I'll go ahead and cut these out. You don't have to uh, because have you ever done this? No. Okay. You want to take your X-Acto knife. You want to cut that out and make sure that you stay right in the middle of that line. Let me show you what we're talking about because you can see the blue tape underneath. So it's important that you take your X-Acto knife and you cut that line out perfect right in the center and don't push through the blue tape. You have to find that medium where all you're doing is cutting the yellow, the yellow tape off. So let my friend Pete go ahead and cut that out. I'm going to give uh, Hood Eye a quick lesson on how to do it. And when we come back, we're going to be moving down the line with our pattern painting with candy apple paints.